Welcome to Brickwall Pictures. I'm Sam, and today's review is for A Congregation of Jackals by S. Craig Zoller. If you've been around this channel for a while, then you know I'm a massive fan of Zoller's books and his films, and that he's a major influence on my own writing. Check the description for links to all of my other Zoller videos. I've previously reviewed his novels Wraiths of the Broken Land, The Slanted Gutter, Mean Business on North Canson Street, and Corpus Chrome Inc., along with his graphic novel Forbidden Surgeries of the Hideous Dr. Davinus and his films Brawl in Cell Block 99 and Dragged Across Concrete, the latter of which I also made a video essay about. And lastly, Bone Tomahawk, which River of Us ran as a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, if you're, <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing. There are two things you can tell from that list. One is that I'm a bit of a Zoller nut, and the other is that the man is a maestro of badass titles. A Congregation of Jackals is obviously no exception. This is a western in the same vein as his follow-up novel, Wraiths of the Broken Land, and his debut film, Bone Tomahawk. I find it odd that Wraiths of the Broken Land tends to be categorized as a horror western, while A Congregation of Jackals is typically categorized as a noir western. As far as I see it, any horror elements present in Wraiths of the Broken Land are also present in A Congregation of Jackals though perhaps not quite as oppressively ever present. Since I'm talking about a Western novel, I think I'm obligated to mention that I wrote a serialized Western called Sins of the Father that is available to read right now for free. Just check the link in the description if you're interested in giving that a shot. A Congregation of Jackals and Wraiths of the Broken Land, along with Bone Tomahawk, they all complement each other well, and they share a similar aim, tone, feeling, and style. Zeller has said that they do form sort of a Western trilogy in spirit, despite telling unrelated stories with entirely different casts of characters. He's eventually doing more Westerns in one form or another in the future, and I think that would be great to see, as the Western genre is one that Zoller truly excels in. Hopefully the Brigands of Rattleburg or Rattle Creek or whatever it winds up being called, hopefully that still gets made eventually too, but uh, it seems to be sitting in limbo for the time being. A Congregation of Jackals was S. Craig Zoller's first novel, or at least his first published novel. Before this, he actually wrote a fantasy epic that hasn't seen the light of day yet. I actually read the first half of Congregation of Jackals twice before reading the second half. I happened to check it out of a library shortly before moving and I had to return it before I made it all the way through. I wrote down the page number I got to, then ordered my own copy and when it arrived, I thought about just picking up where I left off, but then I thought, eh, you know, screw it. And I just started over from the beginning again. And I can report that it is no less gripping on a second read through. If you've watched my other reviews, then you know I don't really get into many plot details usually. A lot of reviews I see tend to mostly just be plot summaries and then they give an arbitrary score at the end. That's what you do when you're a critic and you don't know how to properly critique whatever you're talking about. Or you're a critic who's lazy and just trying to pad out a word count. That's not what a review is to me. If you're looking for a recounting of the plot points, then either just read the book or read a Cliff Notes or something. Actually, I doubt there's a Cliff Notes for this book, but whatever. So that said, I'm going to reveal pretty much nothing about the plot. There are so many great moments, reveals, character turns, and story developments, and I don't want to rob anyone watching this video who hasn't read the book yet of getting the full experience. This is a well-rounded ensemble cast of characters, both on the protagonist side and on the antagonist side, though we learn far more about the former. It essentially boils down to gang versus gang, but they're more like gangs in past tense. Both sides are mere shadows of their former selves, except one side is haunted by the death and destruction they wrought, and the other side misses it. Zoller's masterful flair for violence is here in full force right from his very first novel, though much of it is stored up for the latter third or so of the book. Much of the first two-thirds of the book serves as pitch-perfect buildup for the horrifically violent showdown that stretches throughout the entire closing third of the novel. There is some stuff in here that is as brutal as anything Zoller has written. For those of you who have already read the book, I'll just say the thing with the fish hooks, my god, that was a tough mental image. There's one chapter in particular that I wanted to highlight as it stands out completely from the rest of the book, and that's the chapter in the hotel with the character Blackie. Though one of the main characters is present in the chapter with Blackie, the chapter as a whole has little to no bearing on the rest of the story being told. It functions in isolation from the rest of the narrative, and it plays out like a self-contained vignette with its own beginning, middle, and end. It's a beautiful little one-act play of romance and heartache and longing sandwiched in the middle of this violent western that it feels distinctly apart from rather than a part of. It almost feels like an unrelated short story that was given a tenuous connection to the other characters to be made relevant. But despite how out of place it seems, it just might be my favorite chapter of the book. The emotions expressed in this contained passage are so diametrically opposed 
to what the rest of the book explores, that it makes for a great change of pace and perhaps a brief patch of pleasant respite before the cacophony of violence that follows. And the way this vignette closes is just sublime. At the start of the book, we're sort of presented with what I would consider two main protagonists in Oswell and Dickie. Though if there's a single central protagonist, it's Oswell. Now, I expected to like Oswell and not quite be as sympathetic to Dickie while still enjoying his exceptionally witty badinage. However, over the course of the book, my feelings toward these two completely switched places. I ended up kind of hating Oswald a little bit by the end for this one particular thing he does in the midst of the big showdown. And I wound up both feeling extremely bad for and rooting for Dickie far more than I expected to. The way he's set up at the start as a flippant womanizer made him out to be someone I didn't think I could possibly root for more than anyone else involved. But Zoller pulled off his character arc beautifully. A similar shift happened with my feelings toward the protagonist of Zoller's The Slanted Gutter over a particular decision, as with Oswell. Now, some people might hear me say that I wound up kind of hating the protagonist by the end and think that that constitutes a major fault in the book. And for some readers, that might be the case. But that is absolutely not the way that I see it. Yes, the character did something I seriously disliked, but... I don't go into fiction wanting characters to only ever do things I agree with. It was a decision I disliked and disagreed with, but it was a decision that came from a place of character. It's the choice this particular person in this particular situation would make, and it's nothing if not believable and rooted in truth. It's something I love about Zeller's writing, that he doesn't play anything safe, and that his characters make surprising, unexpected decisions that always feel true to who they are at their core. It's part of what makes his story so unpredictable, in a way that feels genuine and thrilling, and never feels engineered or manipulative. A Congregation of Jackals can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of Zoller's other novels, and is definitely one of my favorites. I already look forward to reading the first half for a third time, and the second half for a second time. I've now reviewed all of Zoller's released narratives at this point, except for Hug Chicken Penny, which means I'll be getting started on that one next, but... There's a decent chance that Zoller might actually put out his next comic before I've gotten through Hung Chick and Penny, so I might wind up covering that one first, whatever that piece ends up being called. It's a sci-fi comic that he's been working on for a while now. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe right here to Brickwall Pictures and check out my other Zoller content. Like I said, I reviewed all of his stuff, so if you're curious about anything, just uh, check my channel or look in the description. And if you want to check out the Western that I wrote, you can look for Sins of the Father in the description. And if you do give it a read, be sure to rate and review it because it helps me out and I love hearing people's thoughts. Again, it's free to read, so, you know, no harm, no foul. Thanks for watching.